Hey everybody, and welcome back to this video in which we go through the process of an acid-base titration, one of the most sacred rituals in all of chemistry. Remember that the two key requirements of any titration are correctly clean glassware and great care in taking and recording volume measurements. In this video, we're going to focus on this second requirement to make sure all our volume measurements are as accurate as possible. This requires us to firstly fill the volumetric equipment accurately, perform an estimated titration, and then perform three runs of a precise titration. In this particular example, we've been asked to determine the concentration of a solution of sulfuric acid by titrating it against a 0.125 molar standard solution of sodium hydroxide. So let's chuck our safety glasses on and get into it. Our first job of rinsing our glassware is to fill the barrette with a titrant, which we deliver into the conical flask. We mount the barrette in the barrette clamp attached to a ring stand, with enough room for a conical flask underneath. To avoid chemical spills, we check that the tap is closed and use a funnel to help fill the barrette with a titrant, sodium hydroxide in this case. Generally, we fill to almost the top of the barrette, and then we open the tap to release a few milliliters of the titrant into a separate beaker. This is to release any trapped air bubbles which may be lying at the bottom of the standard solution. At this point, make sure to record the initial volume of sodium hydroxide, the titrant, in the barrette. We need to know the initial and final volumes of titrant after each run of the titration so that we can precisely identify how much was needed to reach the equivalence point. Take note that the markings on the barrette go from lowest at the top to highest at the bottom. Also, be sure to read the value that corresponds with the bottom of the meniscus and from eye level to avoid parallax error. So here, we'd mark down the initial volume as 2.35 milliliters. Now that our barrette is all set, we'll move on to transferring a precise aliquot of sulfuric acid, our unknown solution or analyte, into the conical flask using a volumetric pipette. Filling the volumetric pipette with the analyte may require a bit of practice using a pipette filler, which is basically a pump. We fill the pipette to above the graduation mark, which indicates the precise volume of the pipette, in this case, 10 milliliters. Then we gently release some of the solution until the bottom of the meniscus lies directly on the graduation mark. We then transfer this 10 milliliter sample of sulfuric acid into the conical flask by taking off the pipette filler, allowing the solution to run out of the bottom. In terms of the volume we record for our calculations, the pipette is precise enough to tell us milliliters to two decimal places. So here we can say we have added 10.00 milliliters of analyte to the conical flask. Finally, just before we begin the actual titration, we add a few drops of an appropriate indicator to the conical flask and swirl to make sure it's all mixed in nicely. In this titration, we'll use an indicator called bromothymol blue. This is yellow below a pH of 6, so it'll be yellow when we add it to the sulfuric acid. But, as we add sodium hydroxide from the barrette, the pH of the solution in the conical flask will increase, and the solution will completely change color to blue at a pH of about 7.6. To make it easier to detect this endpoint, it may be useful to place a piece of white paper onto the flask before the titration begins. Finally, we're on to our actual titration delivering our titrant to the conical flask containing the analyte. It is common lab practice for the first titration to be an estimate, so it's also a bit of a practice run. Operating a barrette requires two hands and can be a bit of a finicky process if we're not used to it. One hand turns the barrette tap to release standard solution into the conical flask, whilst the other swirls the conical flask, making sure that the solutions are mixing together. As the sodium hydroxide enters the flask, Flashes of blue appear in the overall slightly yellow solution as we swirl. Keep adding the sodium hydroxide until the solution inside the conical flask turns completely blue, indicating that we've passed the endpoint. We now record the final volume of sodium hydroxide indicated on the barrette. We'll say this is 19.72 milliliters. We subtract the initial volume, which was 2.35 milliliters from this final volume to get a value of 17.37 milliliters as the rough volume of titrant needed to reach the endpoint in this titration. But rough isn't good enough since our key objective is to measure the precise volume of titrant required to reach the endpoint. So we just use this first result to say that we can confidently add around 12.5 milliliters of titrant to the conical flask before slower addition is required to determine the precise endpoint. B 
Before the next run of the titration, we rinse the conical flask using deionized water and add another 10.00 milliliters of analyte along with indicator into the conical flask. We freely add 12.5 milliliters of titrant, then we close the tap slightly to slow things down. When flashes of color begin to appear in the analyte, we slow the flow of the titrant so it's being added just drop by drop. This is the part of the titration that requires a fair bit of patience and care, as it may take only one extra drop for the indicator to reach the endpoint, at which point you've got to stop the dripping straight away. So, after that key last drop, record the final volume of the barrette. Here, it's 36.20 milliliters, and subtract from this the initial volume, which was 19.72 milliliters, to get 16.48 milliliters as the precise volume of titrant required to reach the endpoint. Note that this volume, as expected, is slightly lower than our estimated volume. Phew, that was intense, but all good because now all we need to do is repeat this titration process two more times. As much of a pain this can seem, this is actually really important for us to achieve reliable results. As long as the three values for the volume of titrant are similar, we take the average to come up with the value that we use in our calculations. So imagine we did this process two more times and we ended up with volumes of 16.44 milliliters and 16.46 milliliters. We averaged these three values to determine that the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the sulfuric acid is 16.46 milliliters. Now we have everything we need to calculate the concentration of the sulfuric acid. All right, everyone, that's it for our titration procedure. Let's take a look at some questions. First, What's the key importance of volumetric analysis? Volumetric analysis is first and foremost all about taking really precise volume measurements. It's important to use proper technique in filling the barrette and pipette with titrant and analyte respectively. Next, what's the first run of a titration used for? Our titration procedure involves a rough first run, which offers an estimate of the amount of titrant required to reach the equivalence point which we then use to guide our three precise runs of the procedure, which require patience and care to gain a really precise measurement of the volume of titrant required to reach the equivalence point. See you next time.